Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today I'm going to be showing you how to complete the drive cycle procedure for your Mercedes Benz. You are going to need an OBD2 port like this, and this OBD2 port is going to be located in the driver's side footwell area, and it looks just like the one I'm touching here, and you may have a cover on yours, but it is going to be in the driver's side footwell area. And once you have the OBD2 reader connected, go ahead and make sure that your ignition is on with the engine off. And you can check the status of the monitors. And you're going to need one of these scan tools to complete this procedure. So I'm going to have a link to the scan tool that I recommend in the description box below. And I'm going to go and cover this in depth with you guys. So stay tuned. And before we jump into the drive cycle, check out the Smog Tips playlist. And once you click on the playlist, you can actually watch the whole drive cycle in process where I'm going to show you how to do this on the road. And if you need further assistance on how to understand these inspection monitors, check out this video titled What to Do to Smog a Car. Hello world, this is Random Fix. And in this video today, we're going to be discussing the Mercedes-Benz drive cycle procedure for any 1996 and newer Mercedes and some people refer to this drive cycle as a trace whatever you want to call it we're going to show you how to go ahead and get your car ready so you can pass an emissions test and for staying tuned till the end of the video I'm going to discuss with you guys some in-depth topics and some tips on how you can pass your emissions test with flying colors before we dive into the actual drive cycle procedure we need to cover some basic vocabulary and we're going to begin off with OBD2 basically stands for Onboard Diagnostics Type 2 and this started in 1996 and before 1996 most vehicle manufacturers had their own port and there was no standardized way of testing a vehicle and it was a big old headache so after 1996 things got very simple with OBD2 and this is actually a great and this is actually a great benefit for everybody involved with car diagnostics and DTC stands for diagnostic trouble codes and there's two kinds of DTCs one is a pending code and the other one is a hard set code and a hard set code is one where the vehicle has detected there's an issue and has confirmed it and thus it triggers your check engine light versus a pending code where the computer knows there's an issue it just needs more information to go ahead and verify it but it has not triggered the check engine light on yet an MIL is a malfunction indicator light aka the check engine light the service engine light service engine zoom light when you're using an OBD2 reader like the one I showed you in the video you're gonna notice that on the scanner you might see an OK and when OK is displayed basically this means that that monitor is complete is set and it's ready versus INC and when you see INC on the OBD2 reader this means that it's incomplete unset not ready and you may run into a few monitors that say NA next to it and basically this does not apply to your vehicle and go ahead and skip that monitor and right here I have five monitors listed in order and this is normally the way the monitors actually set so the very first monitor to normally set is going to be the oxygen sensor heater and the oxygen sensor heater basically helps the oxygen sensor get up to temperature faster so the vehicle can do a better job of controlling its emissions faster then we have the oxygen sensor monitor and the oxygen sensor actually has two parts on most vehicles there's at least two so there's one before the catalytic converter and that's called a pre-cat or upstream oxygen sensor and right after the catalytic converter there's another oxygen sensor called the post-cat or downstream oxygen sensor EGR is the exhaust gas recirculation monitor cat is going to be for the catalyst and the catalytic converter is the actual part in the CAT that's displayed on the scan tool is the monitor 
EVAP stands for Evaporative Emissions Control Systems. And basically, this keeps the gas fumes out of the atmosphere. It has a helpful tip when you're doing the drive cycle procedure for your Mercedes. You want to go ahead and use a stopwatch as this will help you better conduct the drive cycle. So here's some technical parameters for the Mercedes-Benz drive cycle. The very first thing that you want to ensure is that the check engine light is actually off, but it should be working. The gas level should be between 15 and 85 percent. 75 is highly recommended. You park on a level ground. The drive cycle must start while the engine is cold. And the night before, please lock your doors. Keep your keys far away from the vehicle because if the vehicle detects the keys, it may keep it from going into a sleep mode. And one other technical parameter on the Mercedes-Benz drive cycle is you're going to have to do th these drive cycles actually two consecutive times. So keep that in mind. And one other thing you may want to consider is you can go ahead and start with step one through four. But you may also just jump straight to the EVAP testing if your EVAP is the only monitor that's not set. All of these tests are based on engine temperature, so keep that in mind. So now let's begin with the Mercedes-Benz drive cycle. The very first step is going to be setting the oxygen sensor heater monitor. To do this, you want to make sure that the vehicle has an operating temperature of at least 176 degrees Fahrenheit. And when this is achieved, we're going to go ahead and start the engine, increase the engine speed between 2000 to 2500 RPM for two minutes. After two minutes, go ahead and let the vehicle just idle. Make sure there's no loads on the vehicle, such as the air conditioning. Don't turn on the headlights. Don't do anything else and make sure there's no throttle movement or vehicle movement. And after this step has been completed, you could jump straight into step two. And anytime you're jumping between steps, if you want to make sure you got this correct, you can go ahead and use an OBD2 reader like I showed you guys in the video earlier and see if that monitor was set or unset. If it was unset, you can go ahead and repeat the process. Step two, we're going to go ahead and set the oxygen sensor monitor. And to do this, we want to make sure, again, that the vehicle is warmed up. So hopefully you're doing this right after you've done step one. And with the vehicle warmed up, we're going to go ahead and accelerate to 43 miles an hour for at least three minutes. And once this is done, you want to jump directly into step three. And step three is you're going to go ahead and increase your speed from step two, at, which was at 43 miles an hour. Now we're going to go ahead and increase the speed to 48 to 54 miles an hour and keep your speed very consistent, concise. AC should be off. You shouldn't be putting any additional loads on the vehicle, such as turning on headlights. And this is going to go ahead and set that catalyst monitor. And I have a little trick that I use on the Mercedes-Benz. Whenever I came across a vehicle that was a little stubborn and didn't want to set the catalyst monitor, what I would do is I would let the vehicle warm up. Once the vehicle was warmed up, I would ensure that the AC was off, the cruise control was not going to get used. And I would drive to 43 miles an hour for three minutes. I would increase the speed again to 51 miles an hour for three minutes. And once I got done with the 51 miles an hour, I would coast. And when I reached a complete stop, I would go ahead and let the vehicle idle for three minutes in park. And now you can go ahead and use that OBD2 reader again and check the monitor for the catalyst step four. We're going to jump into the fuel adaptation monitor. For this, all you want to do is ensure the vehicle is at an operating temperature of at least 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the vehicle into park. Allow the vehicle just to idle. Make sure there's no load such as the AC, any of the accessories. Everything should be completely off and do this for three minutes. And when this is done, you can use the OBD2 reader to check the monitors and see if you've gone ahead and set it. Number five is gonna be the EGR system monitor. And for this to work, we wanna make sure we have an operating temperature of at least 176 degrees. 
And with this, you want to go ahead and start driving, put the vehicle in drive, smoothly accelerate up to 2000 RPM, take your foot off the gas pedal, and you want to go ahead and coast back to 1100 RPM or lower. And then you want to go ahead and just coast, turn the vehicle off, and wait 10 seconds, turn the vehicle back on. Repeat this step where you go drive to 2000 RPM, coast to under 1100, and come to a complete stop. And you're going to go and now check the vehicle to see if you've gone ahead and set the actual monitor. Six, air induction monitor. For the air induction monitor to set, we're going to need to ensure a few things. One of the very first things is that the engine now actually has to be cool. So we need an engine temperature of less than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to make sure air conditioning is off and the transmission is in park. Start the vehicle. Let the idle increase to 1450 RPM. Keep that engine idle at 1450 until the engine temperature reaches between 158 222 degrees Fahrenheit. Once this temperature is actually reached, start a timer for seven additional minutes at that increased idle of 1450. After the seven minutes is up, go ahead and remove your foot off the accelerator. Allow the vehicle to idle for at least six seconds with no loads. Once the vehicle has idled for six seconds, go ahead and turn the ignition off. Wait 10 seconds, restart the vehicle, and repeat that step again where you're going to increase the idle. Make sure that this temperature was achieved. Start a timer for 7 minutes. After 7 minutes, you're going to go ahead and let it idle for 6 seconds. And then you want to go ahead and turn the ignition off and cycle the key back on. See if you got that monitor to set. The last monitor we were going to go ahead and focus on here is the EVAP monitor. You want to make sure that there's no DTCs in the memory for the EVAP purge valve and also the fuel tank pressure sensor or the shutoff valve and make sure your gas is between a quarter to three fourths full. Park on a level surface. Your engine temperature should be less than 212 degrees Fahrenheit and the air intake temperature should be less than 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure that the vehicle is in park. Start the vehicle and just let the vehicle idle with no load. So the AC has to be off for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, you could go ahead and scan it to see if it's ready. If it's not ready, go ahead and drive for 20 minutes around the city. And after 20 minutes of driving, go ahead and bring the vehicle back, turn it off, wait 10 seconds, and restart the step again with the EVAP. By doing the above steps, should set your monitors for your Mercedes-Benz. And remember, sometimes you are going to have to go ahead and complete these steps two consecutive times. So keep that in mind. This really depends on your vehicle, the age, the miles, as a lot of vehicles may just set themselves within a couple of hours of driving. And when you get back from your test drive, you want to scan it. And if everything is done, it'll say zero codes incomplete, seven that are complete, and four that don't apply, and zero codes found. And this is a 100% chance that you're going to go ahead and pass your emissions tests as long as you haven't altered anything on your vehicle and your vehicle passes the visual inspection as well which I'll cover a little bit later. I've had vehicles where it's taken me over 800 miles to set the monitors so that's why I made these videos so I can save you guys some time and I hope you guys found the video to be helpful. Please don't hesitate to comment down below. Thanks. And once your monitors are set, you're ready to now go and get the vehicle smogged. Remember, if your vehicle is a 96 through 99 vehicle, you will have to get the vehicle tested on a dyno at 15 and 25 miles an hour. They're going to use a gas analyzer to test the vehicle's emissions. They're going to test your gas cap. They'll do some other tests. 
and they're also going to do a visual even if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle they're going to do a visual but on a 2000 and newer vehicle they're just going to check for the obd2 readiness so they're going to plug in their obd2 reader into the vehicle from the state and check the monitors remember the visual inspection consists of checking for altered parts like cold air intakes throttle spacers cracked vacuum hoses missing catalytic converters they're going to do a visual smoke test to make sure that you don't have clouds of smoke coming out the tailpipe and as of the end of 2020 this is the current rules here for California and California happens to be one of the stricter states so you have to check the regulations for your own state here in California if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle you can have any one monitor show incomplete and still pass now depending on the smog station they may just go ahead and plug in their OBD2 reader is not connected to the state see that you have a monitor that's incomplete and tell you to keep driving because they don't want anything to come back to them to show that on their record for the shop showing that they passed x amount of vehicles with unset monitors so if that happens to you go to another station and if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle only the evap could be unset and with diesel powered vehicles 98 through 2006 basically all the monitors have to show complete on newer diesel vehicles 2007 and newer you can have any two monitors show incomplete and remember when you're selling a car it's the seller's responsibility to make sure that they supply the buyer with a smog certificate and normally there's no way of waiving this requirement unless you're selling to a dealer or dismantler so even if you write as is on the title that doesn't really mean anything because if it goes to court you're most likely going to lose that suit unless they're a dealer or dismantler and if you're a buyer never buy a vehicle unless all the inspection monitors are ready and 99% of the times if the inspection monitors are not ready is because somebody has erased that check engine light on purpose to cover up an existing issue whether it's a dealer or a private seller and 1% of the time is caused by a weak or faulty battery and if this is the case you still have to find out why that battery is dying because you could have a potential short you could have an alternator and when there's a bad battery in a vehicle all kinds of funny things start happening from smog emissions monitors not getting ready to transmissions acting up and it's a big list of potential issues I'm going to show you guys the configuration on a typical four-cylinder vehicle here and on a typical four-cylinder vehicle you have two oxygen sensors and one catalytic converter so here's the vehicle here this is the engine and as the exhaust makes it out the engine block through the headers downpipe and it will go past this upstream oxygen sensor which is known as the pre-cat oxygen sensor and then the exhaust will go through the catalytic converter here then the downstream or post cat oxygen sensor will go ahead and get a reading and the way the computer is able to verify the efficiency of the catalytic converter here is by taking this reading and this reading and comparing them based on the parameters of what the vehicle manufacturer has set up to verify that this in fact is working correctly and after the emissions pass the downstream oxygen sensor it goes through a little resonator here down through the tailpipe through the muffler and out to the atmosphere and here on a six cylinder or a cylinder I'm going to show you guys a couple of diagrams down here on these you can have three or four oxygen sensors depending on the setup and one or two catalytic converters so if we look at this diagram right here this is a v6 motor so it has a total of six cylinders three on one side three on the other side 
thus making it a V6 motor. And whatever side cylinder number one is located on, that's called bank one. So if you're dealing with an emissions issue and it tells you that sensor one on bank two is bad or acting up, you can look at the opposite side of cylinder one and know that it's the opposite side. This sensor right here that may potentially need to get replaced. So we have one, two, three oxygen sensors on this vehicle and one catalytic converter. And this too is a V6 motor. The only difference is the cylinder number one is located on the lower side here. And this is bank one and now this is bank two. And here on this setup here, this is a V6 motor and we have a total of six cylinders again, three on one side, three on the other side. But now we have one, two, three, four oxygen sensors and one, two catalytic converters. And if it was a V8, it would just have an extra cylinder on each side. And here's my top eight tips to pass an emissions test. The very first one is gonna be make sure that you smog right the very first time. So if you know your vehicle has an issue, you want to make sure to get that issue fixed before you try to go and smog the vehicle. And you should never really fail an emissions test because with these simple scan tools, you can verify that all the monitors are ready. And before you go to the station, you can just do a simple plug-in and it'll let you know that the car's inspection monitors are ready. And you can do this with confidence, knowing that you're going to go and pass now because any failed emissions data will get reported to Carfax and AutoCheck. And this can actually reduce the value of your vehicle. Number two, you want to make sure that the check engine line is off but working. So before you purchase a vehicle, put the key in the ignition and turn it to the very last position and verify that the check engine light is there. And I've seen people actually remove the check engine light. Three, this really helps with those 96 through 99 vehicles. You want to make sure that the tires are properly inflated as this will lessen the load and will allow the vehicle better operations. The same thing with the oil here. The oil actually contains a lot of the hydrocarbons. And since they're going to be doing a real emissions test using a gas analyzer, you want to make sure you reduce the hydrocarbon numbers here. And this is a simple oil change. And tip five, you want to go ahead and take the vehicle for a very long test drive before you reach the emission station and leave the car on if possible before you get it tested, with the emissions probe. Tip number six, use some fuel additives. I personally love the Lucas Oil upper cylinder loop. You'll find a link to this in the video box below as well as anything else that I showed you guys in the video. Tip number seven, you want to avoid wet weather and this is not to say that you cannot pass an emissions test with it raining outside. However, you'll just get much better results if the tires are dry. And tip number eight, do not disconnect the battery unless you have a battery saver device set up and these are about 15 bucks and basically this will keep your cards, computer data, your clocks, your radio stations all in sync. And remember the only real solution oftentimes is to repair or replace the component. So there's no such thing as a miracle in a bottle. But if you're looking for a quick fix for your catalytic converter, just because maybe you don't have the time or money to go and have that issue fixed. I have a couple of videos down in the video box below that cover such products and I'll give you guys my honest and truthful review of them. And some preventative tips here. I love doing everything myself. So if you can try doing some of the simpler repairs yourself, like the engine oil changes, transmission fluids, differentials, changing the filters, the engine air filter, the cabin air filter, the fuel filter. If you clean your throttle body, change the wipers and do the brakes on your own vehicle. This is such a nice thing to start doing because the more you learn about a vehicle, 
the better off you're going to be as far as taking care of it. And what I have found out from my own experience of working on cars over the last 27 years is the time that I actually save doesn't even compare to the amount of money because a lot of people go and get their oil changed at the dealer and that could take one hour or two hours. Most of the times I'm able to change the oil on my vehicle in under 15 minutes. So not only did I save between 60 to 80 bucks, but I saved myself at least 45 minutes of not having to wait around and I got it done and I can go move on with my life. If you guys found this video to be helpful, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing by smashing on the little subscribe button right here and clicking on that notification button as well. So anytime I post videos that are aimed to save you time and money, that you guys will get notified. Thanks.